Welcome to the podcast. It's Ryder and Lisa and you together. Uh, I'm just slowly peeling off of my peeling off my nail polish. Oh, I thought you were gonna say skin, and I was like, gross. No, I got shellac nails, and I don't want to pay to get my nails done again. Yeah. So I'm just picking off this nail polish, and th- I'm throwing it in the garbage. Like yeah, I'm not yeah. like throwing it on the ground. I'm not an animal. But uh, I'll get there eventually. I have one, two, three, four nails left. How do they look? Yeah, really nice. The yeah. pink ones are really nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just thought of a name for a nail place that anybody listening, if they start one up, can use. Okay. Boom Shalaka Laka. Okay, that's so funny. <laughs> that's really good, right? Yeah, that's really good. Uh, did you hear Adele just locked down a residency? Yeah, so when you have a residency in Vegas... Is there a certain timeline where it ends? They yeah. pay you a certain amount of money. I would say like you lock in for eight months or something or, you know, two years. Right. But yeah, that uh, th- as an artist, how much more convenient is that than traveling the world? Which, I mean, if you've if it's the first time you can go on a world tour, that's pretty amazing. You get to go and see the world. So Adele has but, to live in Vegas? But she'll just live in Vegas, yeah. And like when you have a kid... That just makes it a lot easier. You can even, like, how old's your kid now? Three or four? You can put her in play school. Mm-hmm. Like, I just think that that's a smart move for young parents. Well, I went her, or she could just on her days off take her private jet to go see him if he's at his dad's. Because her and her ex live, like, across the street from each other. Yeah, I wonder if he'll move to sure. Vegas, too. Yeah, like, maybe. The, there's that much money involved in a deal like this that. Here's my problem with these residencies in Vegas, though. Like, I would go on vacation to see some of the artists that have set up shop there. Okay. But when I go to Vegas, there's so many other things I want to spend money on, too. Like, Top Golf or a Vegas Knights game. Ryder, or... don't you go and know you're going to win big at the casino? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if I did win big, that would solve the problem, but... I don't really think I'd be able to budget like 250 American to go see Adele. Right. When I'm spending 250 just to get into a poolside bar to party all afternoon. Yeah, and or spending like 2500 at the strippers like you did last time. No, you're just making things up. I've never done that. Okay. Lisa? What? You don't we don't want that to be a message that people think I'm just some rager <laughs> rager at the strippers? They have really good chicken tenders. You ordered a lot of orders of them. <laughs> I've never spent more than like $200 at the strippers. And that's very rare. Okay. Okay. No. Enjoy the podcast today. It's some <laughs> of our favorite moments from the show. I'm leaving. Okay. This is your, this is revenge for on air today saying that I pick my nose and eat it. I have never eaten a booger in my life. Mm-hmm. Never consumed a boog. This is is the Ryder and Lisa replay. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Check out the Southtown Hyundai Advantage at southtownhyundai.ca. We have uh, something we like to call Unsung Heroes, where we give shout-outs to people, places, and things that don't always get the attention or notoriety they deserve. Yep. Let me be your hero. Shout-out to the invention of bread. So someone just added warm water to yeast and sugar and created this amazing dish then somehow got that information to spread around the world before the internet i am impressed also how did people not give up after the first try like i have several recipes on my phone with video tutorials and when i screw up i just stop trying yeah i've wondered that before as well like that like (laughs) bread has been around for so long Crazy. Shout out to Tiger Woods, who has announced his days of being a full-time golfer are over Mm. to leave more room for being a full-time lover. Ryder. Shout out to people who put their Christmas gifts in bags instead of wrapping them in paper. You also only wear slip-on shoes, don't you? (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to giving hugs in vests. That's it. That's the whole shout out. I don't get it. Just hits it's different. Hard. Well, it's hard to wrap your arms around the person. Oh, it's easy. You got free. Your arms are free. Shout out to walking down the street at night, not knowing if someone salted their path or not. So you just walk really fast on your tippy toes, praying for your knees. <laughs> don't slip. Don't slip. Don't slip. 
Shout out to the Oilers for having one of their best starts in franchise history and to the Calgary Flames for not letting us have the spotlight even this once because they're jealous little dumbhead idiots. Hey. Sorry. Shout out to seeing Santa's little helper in the parking lot of the strip mall taking his smoke break. (laughs) How festive. Tis the sizz. And finally, shout out to anyone who is alone on Christmas and has no one to spend it with. If that's you, please let me know, as I could use the chairs. Oof. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) Counting down the top seven face punch smells. So, like, something that, like, hits you really hard, and you're like, oh, that actually smells great. Oh, I love this smell. Yeah, I made banana bread yesterday, and then it it smells so much better after you open it from a container the next day when the top is kind of wet. What do you call it? The banana fart. (laughs) Oh, I love this. So, uh, yeah, that got us thinking that we wanted to do a top seven face punch smells. And actually, we didn't even put banana bread in the top seven, but it is a really good honorable mention. Same with Matt's text that says puppies. Final answer. Okay, puppy breath, too. Good Good answer. answer. Good answer. How about the smell of vacation? That didn't make the list. Like when you get off a plane in another country Mm -hmm. and like you just smell their local plants and yeah that's what kate said she says uh hawaii specifically the smells hibiscus. very the, floral hibiscus. um okay do we have gasoline in the top four no the gasoline did not make the list because carly on twitter said love when they're filling up uh yeah the big machines at the gas station some other honorable mentions bacon almost made the list yep uh, hugging or dancing with your crush. I wanted that to be in the top seven. Lisa fought for it not to be. Yeah, I was like, I don't... Like, there are people that smell really good. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're a crush. You yeah, know? but it's like when you're crushing on someone, mm-hmm. their smell impacts you more. Okay. I still think it should be an honorable mention more so than in it the is. top seven. You okay. won this argument. Uh, uh, Geraldine wrote in saying Sharpies. <laughs> and fresh sheets, the final honorable mention that didn't make the list. Okay. And number seven, we had popcorn. Number six, fresh cut grass. Number five was a wood burning stove, mm-hmm. indoor fireplace. Number four is coffee, fresh coffee. Mm-hmm. Number three, we have a hockey rink. Ooh. The smell of, I don't know if it's like a combination of the ice and uh, the concession and the sweat of the players. Yeah. I, like, I don't know what the smell is, but it, it just has such a unique smell, especially small town hockey rinks. Mm, yeah, those burgers. <laughs> so good. You got uh, number two on our list. Fire away. I don't know if you have this one or anybody else brought it in, but cinnamon rolls slash cinnamon bun. Especially when you walk by the place in the mall that's making them fresh. Oh. Oh, yeah, 100%. So there it is, cinnamon buns coming in at number two. Mm-hmm. See, cinnamon. I was talking about cinnamon earlier on our show and how underrated it is. Yeah, it's there you go. so good. And number one for face punch smells, <laughs> we have the hotel lobby chlorine smell. You just get so excited. Usually the automatic doors fire open and oh, yeah. you walk in and just wazam. Gonna be having fun on that water slide later. Thank you for checking out the show. Have you ever broken up with somebody because of something dumb that they said? Yeah, it could have been something really ignorant and offensive. It could have just been something that turned you off. Yeah. Because they should have known better. Because it can change pretty quick. Like, I was dating a girl. Her and her friend were over. I was pouring drinks. Okay. And her friend said that she wanted to live in Vancouver because she's always wanted to live on the ocean. Mm -hmm. To which the girl that I was seeing said... There's no oceans on Canada. And you're just pouring the drink in the kitchen. Like yours is, you were going to pour a double. You ended up pouring yourself a quadruple. Yeah, just doing a huge shot in the (laughs) kitchen by myself and being like, this isn't going to work. But legit, that was like a game changer. When she said that, I was like, how do you make it through school and not know that there are oceans around Canada? Like, you have a girlfriend that stopped seeing a guy immediately after he said something racist if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and they had already been on three dates prior and she really liked this guy. But as soon as he said that one thing, yeah, of course. She was gone. Like, like bye. Gone, like ghosted, like never talked to again. So you got one for us? We're at the I'm at, I'm at a crosswalk with this lady. This is a long time ago. And you know that audible sound it may, makes when you can walk across the crosswalk? Yeah. Right? 
She goes, what is that? I said, that's for, for blind people. And she goes, well, I didn't know they let blind people drive. And I went, okay, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Play 107. Teresa texted in saying, I broke up with someone because whenever we'd have a conversation, they kept asking me, what does that mean? They were asking me meanings of words that I had in my sentences, and they weren't even that hard. It drove me nuts. Yeah, that I, would be tough. Yeah, they. Um, Teresa went on to say, I know, I know, not fair, but you have to at least be as intelligent as me or more. <laughs> That's fair. Okay. <laughs> Shannon's text says, good morning, Ryder and Lisa. I have one for you. I was dating this guy in my early 20s. We met at a big pig roast. He seemed really nice and all, and then I met him for lunch one day while he was working. And we were chatting about some random stuff. And then all of a sudden he told me to stay pretty. And I said, are you calling me dumb? He said, no, just stay pretty. And I told him we were done and I left. Shannon, I don't think that we're alone here when we think there is not one. It, one of the most offensive things you can say to someone is good thing you're pretty. Mm, awful. <sighs> you know, people don't even say that to me, though. Are you efficient for a compliment here or? No. It's a good thing you're nice. Hey! 780-784-7107. What do you got? Yeah, I was um, a little bit younger than I am now, and I had a boyfriend who was also a bit younger than me, and he told me that if I voted differently from him in the federal election, he would break up with me. Okay, and so how did that go over? (laughs) Uh, It didn't. I'm a political science major. I was in my third year of university studying politics. (laughs) So uh, I saved him the trouble. Yeah. Did you just say like, well, that's not how it works and bye? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. That was about the end of that. What's, uh, what's your name? Amy. Amy, you could have said like, yeah, I'm, I'm actually voting to be single right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Lighter <laughs> and Lisa. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Play 107.